I got my butthole tattooed and I didn't really even feel uh, it. On your butthole or around your butthole? I mean, I have a love heart around my butthole and then I got spider web from the love heart out. And then I had spider web already from the outside in, but there was like a gap in the taint. So I spider webbed my taint. I and, also and just thought butthole. that getting my butthole bleached was so iconic and hardcore. And now. Did that hurt? Is that hurt? No, it didn't. Okay. But I was like, oh, I'm so hardcore. And now nothing. So what's like now, the uh, process of asking your tattoo artist to tattoo your butthole? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Because nobody that tattoos me would tattoo my uh, butthole. Why? Because they're not gay and they feel weird about a man's butthole what do you mean i'm being honest i love my tattoo friends but some of my tattoo friends were like i don't i can't and then he was like i know a guy that can and then the guy that could didn't tattoo into the butthole because he didn't want to go too far so then I, a guy on grinder that is a tattoo artist who heard my show he's like i'll do it so i had a guy from grinder come over and he did he has like an instagram i checked his instagram he can tattoo i don't need it to be great i just need my asshole filled with ink so there's no gaps. So he did it. Former professional skateboarder, auto racer, MMA fighter, Jason Ellis is joining us today on So Funny It Hurts, where we explore the trauma of your favorite funny people and why it makes them the way that it does. And honestly, I have nothing more to say. I know everything I've ever needed to know about your asshole. And I could literally just cut it here. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Jason. You're welcome, maybe. Um, it's a big welcome. It's a big asshole. Yeah. Okay, good. And I'm very happy that it is. Good. Thank you. Um, I want to tell you something. Mm. First of all, I'm so happy you're here. I love you. I only met you a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And you gave me a Father's Day gift. You're the only person to give me a Father's Day gift. So I love you. Yeah, dude. I Thank love you. you. Listen, you're a really great dad. And I've been enjoying mm. following your journey so much. But I met you on our friend Sarah Highland's podcast. Mm -hmm. And you were such a vibe. Uh, and I was like, please come on. But what I didn't realize is like, you really are a fucking icon. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you are. You do everything. <laughs> you're a dad. You're a stand-up comedian. You're a radio host. You're a uh, MMA fighter. Like, you do it all. I tried to. Yeah, and you did very successfully. You set the Guinness World ballet. Record. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you did a 70-foot drop. Uh, yeah, kind of. Guinness Book of Records write it in a way that sounds really dramatic. But, like, the actual bit, to me, I dropped 16 foot into a 30 two foot quarter pipe and they added up from the ground from where I jumped off with 72 feet, but it's not exactly true. Okay. Well, you still set the record, babe. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to just take that compliment. Okay, good. Thank yeah. you so much. You also have an amazing uh, band, Taint Stick. Yeah, I, did. I listened to all the lyrics today yes. on the way here and it was beautiful. You and Benji <laughs> Madden and just throwing down the romantic hits. Not exactly, but I yeah. want to load on your face. So I was yes. like, this is beautiful. I wrote that, yeah. And I left it. Yeah, I meant that. Uh, you have an incredible podcast with Tony Hawk. Yeah, Hulk versus Wolf. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I mean, you're doing a lot of shit. I'm trying. And I'm really here for it. You mm. also recently uh, just came out as, how would you describe, pansexual? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the one. That you're supposed to say. Yeah, because you, for people that don't know pansexuals, you just have no judgment. You can be uh, attracted to anybody and have mm -hmm. a relationship with anybody. Yes. And I love that so much. You know, I would say that I also am pansexual, but as a woman, I found that men, particularly straight men, have always found that as a like an open door to mine and my fiance's relationship. Yes, a fantasy. If you uh huh. Will. And a I dream, sometimes, yeah, if you will. Yeah, and I. You're dreaming that it's gonna work. Yeah, and you know what? It's not okay. Oh, you I'm guys are lesbians. Cool. Well, but you're bi. Like maybe I could. Yeah, I know. Oh, good. You understand this oh, conversation yeah. no, perfectly. I live in this. Yeah. There's a part of me that is still a Kyle and thinks that Monster might be great and I should head by the wall. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I realize that that is a ridiculous part of me that has been raised by society to think that, you know, two boys kissing is gross or yeah. all that stuff. So that's, you know, I get that. Or your penis kind of kicks in. You're like, yeah, maybe I could plow it. It's like, shut up. Yeah. Your dick is stupid. Yeah. You know? It is fucking stupid. It is. Everything it's Just ever had to shut say. Up. Yep. Shut the fuck up. Um <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to talk about your pansexuality and I also want to talk about being so mask 
presenting and really dominating in such mask sports because yeah. I feel like when I met you, I was like, oh, he's for sure straight. Yep. And then when I found out, I actually was like, why is he on this gay podcast? Yeah. And I found myself not judging, but I was like, why is he here? This is. And so when I found that out, even my own stereotypes, I was like, girl, you need to break through. Yes. Um, but I want to start from the beginning. It is. We did just celebrate Father's Day. Mm -hmm. You have two beautiful kids. Mm -hmm. Uh and I, I love that. I feel like you've made such a great life for them. You grew up in Australia. Yep. So what came first? The skateboarding is what really like catapulted your entire career. Yeah. It's what woke me up. Yeah. And what happened? You were just like, is that always what you wanted to do? Did you know that you were just wanted to be an athlete? No, I knew I wanted to be a pro skateboarder when I was a little kid. Yeah. I saw a magazine. And then I think maybe the the uh, future primitive, like a, one of the first skateboard videos that ever came to Australia, the Bones Brigade, and it was like four or five guys, and they skateboarded for a living, and they had this video where they're all hanging out skating, and I, and I was like, that's it, that's what I want to be. Yeah. And it wasn't even I was the first Australian born person to be a pro skateboarder. So when I pitched it, I made my parents their divorce. I made them meet at a pub. And I pitched to them that they could take care, if they could financially take care of me for the next six months, that I would be a pro skateboarder. And they were like, that's not a job. And I was like, yes, it is. There's guys in America that get paid to skateboard. And they were like, okay. And then six years later, so I ended up having to get a job and all that stuff. I, I was incorrect on the timing. But after six months, I went to America and got sponsored and then came back and uh, did some really crappy jobs. I'd go to America, Australia for six months, work, get money, go back, holiday visa for another six months. So I did that four times. And then on the fourth one, somebody was like, we'll get you a green card. We'll sponsor you. You can live here. We'll pay you. And it was a very small amount, but I didn't need anything. I lived with other skateboarders, slept on the couch, but I was a pro skateboarder. Yeah. And, then, you know, over... A long time, you know, it built up, made some more money, made a name for myself. But just, it was before that. Like, the, I wasn't talented. I wasn't a gifted athlete at all. I just, it was the only thing that had ever not let me down. It was like the thing that was mine. It was the first thing that was ever mine. Didn't need anybody to do it with. I could do it by myself. Mm -hmm. I would do it in my head. I would just skate in my head when I wasn't skating. So I was so obsessed with it. I still to this day when I meet people that skate, I I don't have the the drive or discipline or anything. It was just I loved it more than I've loved anything in my whole life. So I just gave everything to it and it woke my body up. My body became athletical. After wow. like 10 years of skating, I could do backflips standing on the ground. There was no way I could do that when I was a kid. I was never like when I, I was a sport guy, I love sport. But I was never good. I wasn't fast. I wasn't any of that stuff. I never won any races or anything in school. Like it was just skateboarding saved me. And then it turned my body on. And that's when I woke up and was like, if you can do this, you can do other things. Yeah. Because it really didn't look like you had any of those gifts and you've and you made them. So it was like a big lesson for me where I realized that natural talent was not a thing. You know, or maybe there is a thing that you have that, but drive, like hard work, passion can can beat talent. Not only like rival it, it can beat it. I actually love that you said that so much because I'm a singer first before I yeah. do anything, you know, and have I, am I the best singer? No, I'm not. Will I work harder than anybody else in the room? I will. Right. And will I be consistent? Yes. In the end, I think that's the stronger thing to have because talent sometimes you cruise on it too much and it doesn't stay forever but hard work it always works out if you're that yeah that's what i found anyway all right so you skateboarded and then that was that your identity in school yeah. like how did you no, become no, no. funny because really you have school. a oh good but I, I, my father said that i could le like uh the day that i turned 16 he said you're terrible you because i they stayed down i failed year eight and I stayed down, and then when I turned 16, my dad was like, you should just work, get a job as a brick. So your dad was the one that said, you don't need to go to school anymore. 
He just said you're t so bad at it that it's pretty obvious that you're wasting your time. You should just get a job. And because I was, I have dyslexia and stuff, so I was really bad at school. I failed, like, uh, you know, reading and writing. I couldn't read or write, really. I learned how to read and write over here. Wow. I'm doing reads on the radio. How old were you when you started learning how to read and write? 30s. No way. When I was a pro skateboarder, I had to go to the skate park every day, McGill Skate Park, and to get in, you had to write down your sponsor, and I was sponsored by Planet Earth. And I always wore a Planet Earth T-shirt. And when people weren't looking, I would look down and copy it because I can't spell Planet Earth. And then whenever I would go to cash checks at the bank, I would put a wrist guard on and tell them that I can't write because I couldn't spell like 500 or anything. No way. So mm -hmm. you made it through your entire Completely professional yeah. career mm -hmm. uneducated as far as academics. Yeah. And was that the dyslexia? I mean, I think that's an excuse too. I think when someone told me I was dyslexic, I was like, well, then I don't have to even try to learn it anymore. And then after becoming a pro skateboarder and then getting into radio and becoming really good at radio and, and going, wait a minute, like you didn't have any talent at skateboarding and you became like top three in the world. Like when someone tells you you got dyslexia and you can't learn to read and write, like maybe they're wrong. That's, I think that a lot of it, the thing that pays off for me from not being educated is that I never got into the system of like thinking the way everyone needs to think. Right. Like I've always, like I know that's like you can read a lot of stuff and then you can have that information. If you can store it, then yeah. But I don't think that's smart. Like I'm not saying it's dumb. I'm just saying I don't know how to like add up equations and all that stuff because I didn't get educated. But I still know what's going on. Like if you're full of shit, I'm going to catch it. Right. Like I'm on the planet. But do you think that's because that's something that's like innately in you? Or do you think it's because you had the experience to learn very quickly like what the streets were about because of skateboarding? I think I had a blank canvas. So mm -hmm. all the other things in life that aren't like uh, school education, I learned those. Like the, the, the way the world works, you know, how to get a job, how to get, get somewhere in life. I figured that out real early. So I just put my head down. You know, when it comes to getting good at things or getting what I want, I just put my head down, you know, and I don't listen to anybody else's you can't do it or you, you probably at this point, blah, blah, blah. Like it doesn't mean anything to me because I can tell being a pro skateboarder when I, when I thought that I was going to be one was a ridiculous fantasy. But because I knew it before my body had even got to the, to the party, I knew it, you know, and that's how, that's how I know I'm going to be good at, good at comedy because I know it. That's just how it is. Like, and the radio, I was going to be big in radio because I fucking know I am. I know what it takes and I know who I am and, and I am a guy that gets it. Mm -hmm. So those, but those things are also like being good at stuff now. I'm like, so what about that? Like, that was like a thing. If I got good, then you'd love me. It's all about being loved. Like, I felt like nobody liked me or something. Okay. I'm going to ask whole you. Thing, be good at stuff so people will be nice to you. It's fake nice. Yeah. It's not the real thing. It's not real love. So now it's more about, uh, you know, I want to be good at comedy because I want to be good at it. And I don't want to know that I figured out how to do it. But like the pat on the back, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying I hate him, but it just doesn't mean anything in the game of life. Like being cool. I tried so hard to be cool. Yeah. And now I'm like, for what? Uh, you know, we talk a lot about. Because I interview comedians, and, and that's really all I interview okay. for the most part. And I feel like there's something very special about comedians because uh, we live our whole lives trying to make people feel good and to laugh. Yeah. And very oftentimes we're looking at comics who have to keep that smile on all day. And when it's time to turn it off, it gets into a very dark place as yeah. we see like Robin Williams, which is why when people are like, you're so funny and you're like, thanks, it's a trauma. Um, did you have the love that you desired early on in life? Like where did that lack come from that made you turn to skateboarding and comedy and making people feel good? I, I don't want to blame anybody, but I think my parent, my, my mom had me when she was 16 and my dad was 20 and they were, you know, alcoholics and my father has a lot of problems and I don't think he was around uh mentally you know I mean like as in like he was around but like 
not connecting with me. I think he was so young. And my mum was so young. Like 16 yeah. is insane to know that she was just by herself and he left her for her friend who's now my stepmom. So there's this whole awkward thing that I've grown are up Are they with. friends now or no? Fuck no. No. Still to this day. And I've how old are they now? i meet before. Like the kids are here. Can we all meet like in Australia? And they wouldn't. My mum won't come to the house to be all to. I couldn't do it. I could not make it happen. Yeah, but good for your mom. She's yeah. like, fuck that. I'm never giving in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I feel that way too. Well, now I've had therapy, so I might go by. But before That's... therapy, I would have said no. Right. Yeah, well, my mom was not going to do therapy, I think. I don't, I don't know. I don't hate her for it at all. Yeah. I, in the end, I feel like my stepmom didn't really like me <laughs> and was kind of mean to me a little bit. Not like she didn't hit me or anything, but my dad did because my dad had a crazy temper. Yeah. But he also cared for me, but did abuse me. So it was like a mixed message. So I don't really know what love is, you know, because it's because it's coming from people that don't really mean it, or it's coming from people that mean it, but they're they're doing it with with uh, you know no no boundaries, mm -hmm. just like anything goes kind of thing. And then there were other people around the family that abused me when I was a little bit older, some women, and that one didn't even really register because of the other ones that happened when I was a little boy. But when I got older and like went through the little boy stuff and then realized like, hey, you know, like a bunch of 30 year olds and 40 year olds sleeping with a 16 year old is not cool. But when you're 16 and your mom's friends mm -hmm. want to bone you, it's pretty cool. Did you time. know early on that you were sexually fluid? No. Even around that age? No, I'd had a couple, one skateboard buddy when i was real little blew me i had like these weird <laughs> interactions where guys would blow me that are not gay in like weird like one kid blew me in his bedroom out of nowhere i didn't do it i didn't say we should do it it just started happening and i was like that feels pretty good but i'd already been abused a couple of times by two different people when i was a little kid yeah so that one didn't maybe i didn't catch it but then it happened twice two friends did that and we like where they'd blow me and then i'd blow them and then i was like i don't know what that is maybe it's just desperate times you're a little boy and you know you don't have a girlfriend and you're discovering stuff so i never thought about it that much and then when i was 17 and i came over here another skateboard friend of mine that i came here with he did it and i was like what is what is with me, you know? And then I think the first interaction with somebody where I went to find it was uh, maybe like 18, 19, when I found a gay bar mm. in, a, in a big drag queen, took me into a bathroom and blew me. And I was like, wait, you can go to these places and, and – uh, Everyone wanted, because I was like a young kid, I was, I was kind of attractive, so yeah. it was, I, I could only, it would be five minutes before someone was like, hey, let me blow you, and I'd get blown and then leave, and I was like, I'm just, I just found a loophole, but I'm not gay, because if I could go to a bar where girls would say, hey, go to the bathroom and blow me, I'd rather that. But that doesn't happen. No, they won't do that, they're, they're smart. So I want to talk more about that, but I want to hit on... Uh, you being young and already you were very immersed in um, sort of the skateboard world. Now, as as just me, I see that as very like mask behavior. Oh, yeah. Like it's like bros and dudes. Hey, it's not even a world that I know very well. Right. And I would equate that to things that you've done later on in life with MMA and auto racing. Like these are all very masculine, heavy. Say trying again? to impress my father. Oh, and that's why you did it. Like you wanted to show like I'm I mask, think, uh, like I'm strong, I'm masculine, I'm powerful. I think. Did you find that there was a lot of homoeroticism in those sports? No. None? No. Not at all. Not even MMA. Not until a gay friend was like, wow, this is really gay. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, he's kind of. It looks like he's trying to fuck him right there. And I'm like, I, how do you, I guess, yeah, I never really looked at it like that. That's how I see 
see it too. I, I'm like, they're hugging. They don't I, have any clothes on. That's the gayest way to see MMA they're ever. They're necking. Yeah, I don't. But I'm a cuddler, so I'm like, look at that. They're just snuggling. I don't see it like that. Listen, I, we had the Knights, the Knights game, the hockey players. Yeah. They won. I don't want to get in trouble for this, but they won the Stanley Cup. Yeah. And yesterday, they or a couple of days ago, they had their parade. And half of them didn't have their shirts on. Half of them were hugging while pouring beer on each other. <laughs> and I was like, okay, queen, like go off, bitch. See, and to me, it felt like I was in the gay club. See, straight me sees that and goes, these guys are celebrating. Right. I don't, I still have like a very straight mind. Yeah. And like that's it's, okay. It's, 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 I'm still confused. Like even yesterday when, you know, I mean, a, a girl, came over to me and, and then I was very engaged with her. One of my trans friends came over came over and said, you're so straight. You're just, I feel like you're gay for pay. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like I have way more gay sex off camera than on camera and it's free. I like it. I like it more most of the time. But yeah, there is something about a pretty girl where I don't think I've ever met a guy and gone, oh my God, like, you know what I mean? Like, is there any, you know, can I get your number? Can we go to dinner or something? Like, I'd love to know you. Right. It's never, it's more, I've hooked up with a guy before and I was like, you're pretty cool. We could hang out, you know? Could you see yourself falling in love with a man now that you've sort of freed yourself up for that? This is so new. But yeah, now, now I mean, this is so new, but I, I definitely wouldn't take it off the list now. Because I do have a boyfriend and I do care for him. But I also don't feel like being really serious at this point would be fair to him. And I'm, I, I just feel like not right now f serious about anybody. I don't want to let anybody down. And I, I already can tell he knows I have a, you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a little whore. Like I, I love like a little group. Well, you just came out. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> Sorry, when. I'm not answering good. I'm tired too. You're answering perfect. Am I? Okay. You're okay. doing perfect. Okay. Listen, it's really hard to navigate. I feel I'm empathetic figuring it out as it's for coming you. out of my face. And like, listen, I'm the safe I feel like space. These questions have never been asked. I'm okay, like, well, well, I'm the know. safe space. And <laughs> if you're like, I don't know, bitch, that's an answer. Okay, I it's very that. difficult to navigate. Yeah. I remember when I left my ex, which I've shared a little bit with when you. you were with him, like as far as you thought or I've the world always thought? been bisexual but I the problem for me did is Did you ever date a girl before? I well I didn't really date anybody because I did reality television at 16 and my career exploded and I grew up in a family that was very dysfunctional and that golden ticket for me was like a chance for me and my brother to get the fuck out. Mm -hmm. So I I didn't want to date anybody. I okay. was a virgin for a really long time. I had no desire wow. to be with anybody. I know yeah. I was like really but uh, mm -hmm. but I Good for you I had but it was like means of survival like I needed to take my career to a place where me and my brother could have a nice life yeah. and I didn't want to fuck anybody girl or boy I didn't want a relationship and no I didn't have any I did but I was so I grew up pretty dysfunctional yeah. so when I was on American Idol the number one show in the world at top 12 I, same as you, I was like, I'm going to do really well on the show and I'm going to be famous and I'm going to make money and I'm going to take my brother and we're going to have a good fucking life and get out of this shit. And that was all I cared about. And it, and it really was. It wasn't even about being famous as much as it was like, I don't want this life yep. and my voice will get us to where we got to go. Right. So when I did I start to get out too. Yeah. <laughs> and I, like you, I didn't feel loved. I felt, which is why I'm funny. I do stand up because if you're laughing with me or if you're crying with me, that's how I feel love. Yeah. And mm. it's taken me so much therapy. It's only been this year that I've been like, I feel more confident in who I, like I don't have anything to prove. Yeah. I had everything to prove yeah. my entire life. Me too. And I did it until I was burnt on both ends, yeah, me too. dying. Yeah. And I drank a lot and I ate a lot and me I too. had a, a addiction behaviors, my family's addict, like all the things. So I'm sharing this with you so that you also feel comfortable because one, I'm very transparent, but by the time I started dating, 
I was... I wasn't accepted in the lesbian community. They thought I was straight, so they were really mean to me. I, the straight men. Wow, we are. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we Isn't are. Isn't it interesting, though, when you do what you do and I do what I do, but you're a woman and I'm a man, the different opinions of that so different like all of a sudden we're completely different and one of us is incorrect and the other one's okay like mm -hmm. even though we're exactly the same we're doing the exact same thing but some of us like, oh easy jason and i'm like wait i can't kiss a guy well it's i think it's the equivalent to like a man can do stand up and be really funny but a woman can't it's which is equivalent which is, to yeah, insane it's insane and idiotic but it's and, equivalent to lesbians are hot and gay guys are gross that's basically right. what it is. It's like a reverse misogyny. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because we're perceived. With the, the woman is this beautiful thing that you help yourself to. That's what they're here. They're put on the earth for. It's just this weird. I don't know who pushed it on dudes, but we have this thing where we think we're entitled, or, or like just it's such a. You're beautiful if you make out with another woman because you're beautiful. But if I make out with a guy there's something gross about it because they're like connecting to it and they don't want to relate to it. I don't know which, what it is exactly, but it's like, it's love. If somebody's attractive, they're attractive. Like if mm -hmm. Brad Pitt makes out with me, I think that's hot. Yeah. You know? And if yeah. you think it's not hot, you need to look at yourself because there's a problem there. It's, and it's not my problem. Yeah. But this is all new information for you. Yeah. When you came out and I only want to go as far as you're willing to go. But when you did come out, how recently was it only just? Oh, I came out on the Stern show like a, a, a while ago. And but how it did it come like, about? Like you were I on want. Stern and yeah. you were like, I'm pansexual. Like how I've would something like that before, come up? I, I was on there before. I've been on there four times. You were on the I, Stern show four times. Yeah, And I think the third time. At the very end of the interview, and I had these events, Alice Mania, and I have a lot of trans friends, and I would always have them be ring girls, or I've always been supportive. Had I flirted with them, did I find them attractive? Hell yeah, I did. Of course I did. I admitted it, but because I was married, I never acted on it, And but then when we start, we broke up, and then Alice Mania started happening, and they were still around, I started doing things with some of them. I didn't know that they were telling people, but I did more than I I'd realized at the time because I had one of them on my show recently and she's like, you don't remember this, this and this. I'm like, whoa, that's really gay. She's like, yeah, you did that. Okay, wow. I did not know I did that. So I think I was coming, I was letting it go, but the only way I could let it go was to be intoxicated. Like I would, the only way I, mm -hmm, when I would mm -hmm. act out was when I got a lot of drinks into me or some drugs, then I could have the courage to go over to a trans girl and be like, hey, let's hang out. I don't care if somebody catches me. You know, and then I'd in the morning, if somebody did catch me, I would regret the shit out of it and deny, deny, deny. Because it was oh. I had a therapist at the time that was saying, Don't tell anyone, your career will be ruined. He advised me not to. So I I didn't Don't tell people that you've been with trans women because that will ruin your career. Yep. And then the Stern show on the third one, at the very end of the interview, Howard said, is there anything else you'd want to discuss? And I was like, no. But to me, I thought he knows something because Stern people do their, their research. Yeah. He knows something and he wanted me to do it right there and then. And I, I idolized Howard Stern and I felt like, you backed out of it. You, you talk about how you're always honest, whatever you think comes out of your mouth, but you won't talk about that. You won't touch on that because you know that you, you're a man's man and all your fans, a lot of them are men's men. And if you start talking like that, they're going to they're gonna frown upon it. You're going to lose your, your, your shine. People are not going to care anymore. And then with my wife that I just broke up with because I'm super easy to live with, um, she when we first started dating, I had a calendar in the, in the kitchen and she, it was a trans calendar that one of the girls gave me. She's like, you're into this. And I was like, I, I got divorced. I really didn't think that I knew I, I knew I got divorced because I wanted to do other things with other, with, with guys and trans girl. I knew that it, something was, I was depressed because of the life I was living. Right. And when I would see these other people, I was like, God, I want to be over there with them. Like they make sense to me. Right. But I've, I've done this and I can't get out. 
Mm-hmm. And I just, I, this is what I do. I, instead of just going, I want out. This isn't going to work. I don't feel happy. I just, bec- I shut off until you get sick of me and you leave me. Because I don't have the courage. I don't want to bum you out. I love you. And I'm going to tell you this and break your heart. I can't do it. So she left me. So wait, I just quickly want to say, so you say on the Howard Stern show. Oh yeah. So the fourth time when I go on, they ask me, is there anything you want to talk about? Anything else? Uh-huh. And I was like, because my, my wife at the time had helped me come out and her and a few friends knew that I was bi and they got me a grinder account. They started helping me. Supportive. Get, my ex-wife had got me boys to come over. She would hide in the dog kennel and we put a blanket over it because the first time she had someone come over, they blew me. I come, they leave, shut the door and say thank you. And I told my wife when she comes back downstairs, I go, this guy just blew me, didn't want anything else in return and thanked me like I'd given him something. And she's like, I don't believe it. I'm like, you got to see it. So then she goes in the kennel and then I did it a couple of times where I'm like, and they leave and I'm going, can you believe this? And we'd come out and we'd laugh and giggle about it. This and, is the wife that you recently just yeah, split ways with. Yeah. So that's where I was like, you can marry this girl because not only, because that was the thing. Don't, I don't want anyone to put up with it. I want you to be into yeah, it. Yeah. Right. If you don't, if you're like, if you, that's what you need to do, Jason, then I'll put up with it. That's not what I want to do. So I thought we had something here, but then- once I was allowed to be gay, I started doing like. Is at first like I'm not kissing a guy, I, 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 I it's too gay. Like it, it progressed. Like you could blow me, but don't kiss me. Mm-hmm. Don't put your hand on my head. Don't like get around behind me. Like you think you're gonna butt fuck me. Like n- no. Like don't ever do any of that. There was a trigger where I'd go from horny to angry. Right. So there was like, a, and then I was in therapy, like trying to work it out. Like, why am I doing this? There was times where I'd go to places and just look for people that reminded me of people that tried to take my power away when I was a kid and I'd make them blow me and come in their mouth and just walk off. Payback. Like I'm in charge now. You're not so doing it to you, me. I'm doing it to you. As someone who was abused. Yes. Found yourself in a position sometimes where you tried to take the power back. Yes. By... Like erotic behavior. Yes, because that's what happened to me as a child. And once my therapist broke that down to me and I understood that to be true, it was very easy to not do that again. Right. But it's kind of like a, a obese person eating food. Like you got to figure out a new way to eat food. You still got to eat, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm still going to have sex, but mm-hmm. I can't have sex like that. Right. So there was a lot of changes where all of a sudden I don't like because my wife my ex-wife would be like you go get someone to blow you or go hang out with them then you come back I don't you know you don't care about them she just didn't want you to have the emotional connection right but then when I started to realize that that's not healthy and that I only want to have sex with somebody that I really like and I'm attracted to inside and out that's when things got bad that's so when, I I'd have a relationship with them after sex, like they text me and I'd be like, how's your day? Good. How's your day? And then she'd see that and be like, what the f- fuck are you doing? Yeah, right. And I'm like, I, she said, do you love this person? I'm like, kind of like, not like you, but, but yeah, I do really care for them. Like, isn't that, so, but it became a thing where she was like, this is Polly and I'm not interested in that. And then there was this one person that I was seeing that she said, I can't see him anymore. A trans guy. And I just couldn't, they kept texting me and I kept trying to block their number and I just gave up and like she said, Un- can you unblock me on social media? So I did, this is bad. So I unblocked it and then I liked a photo and she, my ex saw it and was like, that's it, we're done. Yeah. And I didn't argue because I'm like, why are you, why did you do that? You know, why can't, why is it such a big deal to not block this person out of your life? I was like, because I, don't, I feel like something's not right at home. I feel like this is where I should be. Not necessarily with him, but I should be but in, in a relationship community. where, yeah. Because he kind of. So I do want to just finish. And then I do want to talk about life after marriage. You go on Howard Stern for the fourth time. Mm-hmm. And you're sitting there and he takes his glasses and he says, do you have anything else to tell me? And you say what? That I'm, that I'm bi. And how does he respond? 
of course he wanna he wants to just get to the point where it's like have you taken a dick in the ass? Have you sucked the dick? So he goes right into and I don't the blame him for it. He's a vulgarity of yeah, it. Yeah, because because everybody that's listening is a dude's dude, and that's really all anybody really wanted me to say. Did you just feel laugh at shame me. at that oh, moment? Yeah. 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 Did I you go successful? along with it? Yeah, because I felt like a stern. I've made fun of myself on there several times at my expense because I'm an entertainer, and I was going on there to let people know that if you come over to my show, you can still listen to Howard. But I have a great show too. I'm the next big thing. And am I willing to put M&Ms in my foreskin for it? Hell yeah. I'll do anything on that show to make it. Because as I said before, you know how you make it? You do anything. You don't give – I don't care what it is. I'll do it if it's going to get me to the next level. So it was an easy choice for me. Every time I went on there, the first time I got on there, I, I didn't. he didn't ask me to come on. I pitched to him – a game because I knew one of his staff is uncut. So I was like, let's have a game where who can put the most M&Ms in their foreskin is the winner. So king of all pouches. So they thought it was a great idea. So they had me on. So I'm naked. So that's how you get on Howard that's Stern. That's how I got on. So you went to Howard Stern. You said, I want to have be on your show. And yeah. here's the idea. And they brought you on. Yeah. Okay, kid, and you come went on, on in. four Take your times. Pants off. And then because I did so well, they had me on again and again until the fourth time where I came out as gay. Robin said that I was a bad parent. And I think that I said, I laughed. I went with it and said, you know, that. Was she being serious or she was yeah, kidding? Yeah, she's being serious. Mm -hmm. And I was, after it, I was pretty dark about it because I was like, okay, we're all having fun here. But I mean, you, you don't have kids and maybe you don't realize what, am I the greatest parent? No. I, I've made tons of mistakes. Is it difficult to be my kids? Yeah. Whose fault's that? Mine. I know. I know what I've done. You know, I I hate it. But what it. did you do? I've been, my son gets, I don't, I don't want to get into it. I, I and mean, I, I, my question, <laughs> let me rephrase it's that. It's not easy. Being... My question was not, what did you do? My, my question, I guess, was, um, I feel that it's really difficult to live authentically. And I feel like for me, I don't have kids. When I left my ex and I didn't do it in a way that I was so proud of, I desperately wanted to live an authentic life. And mm -hmm. I knew that only way was to be with the community that I wanted to be right. in. And I felt really bad. Right. And a lot of people had a lot of things to say about me and they dragged me for filth because of it. A lot of people quit talking to me. I bet. But... All I could do was just be the best person that I could be. Do I have my faults? Do I fuck up? Did I? Could yep. I have done it better? All of these things. Yep. But my heart has always been in the right place. That's and me I too. think with you, you've done what you could and you've done what needed to be done, but your heart has always been in the best place. Yeah. I and believe I think that. that's an unfair thing to, to say true. then, talking about a someone's parenting and i don't think that's fair i'm right. sorry she said that yeah and it was a it was a and i and i never got asked to go back on again. he never asked you to go back on after you came out Yeah. all of a sudden we were no longer cool did he say something or no, was just like we never the call really chatted stopped? much he tried to chat to me one time he's like you take photos huh and i was like not really my wife just bought me a camera and i was like that was he was trying to because we don't we don't have a lot in common. I am a ridiculous high testosterone, over the top dude, and he's kind of gay, you know. Yeah. Like he's the things that he's into, and I'm, but I'm the gay one. He seems really understanding with that, so I don't see him with a problem with me. You think he was understanding with the yes, fact that I you were do. gay? I just, I mean, I don't know him. I only know him from listening to his show, but he does seem like a person that supports you us. think it was just production that chose not to have you back on i don't know why because it's really such an odd thing why. i know that you know, i mean i hit it out of the park four times and then the fifth time i think i had a new book and i was like hey i'll come back on it's been a year no i was like oh and they said no yeah i was like oh oh okay and then the show started to go down as well when i came out you know? Your show. Yeah, so time. for people that don't know, you hosted a show, the Jason XM. Ellis show yeah. from 2005 to 2020. Yeah, like 18 years or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you um, hosted that show. And then the ratings started. You're saying the ratings started going down after you came out. Yeah. Yep. 
Were you getting hate mail? Were you seeing yeah. it for yourself? Yeah. And were they men that were fans of yours before that felt upset? Yep. So let's go into that now. Now you're still doing everything the same. Mm-hmm. And you're still in these very mask worlds and even stand up comedy is still very male driven. Mm-hmm. Have you found a lot of push against your sexuality in all aspects, <laughs> be it MMA, be it uh stand up comedy? I think stand up comedy is fun. Right. I don't sense it there. Right. Uh MMA big time. I don't talk about MMA that much anymore because anybody that likes MMA, they don't get their information from me. No way. So they're very homophobic. Sorry, but you are. That's okay. You are. Like one guy wore the the rainbow stripe on his shorts and the hate on that guy for supporting the LGBTQ was heartbreaking to me because I love MMA. I'm a fighter. Yeah. Like that's what I am. You know, like I discovered it late in life, but – I was born for it. Yeah, your first fight, you like got him in a chokehold. It was like a rap. Am I right? Yeah. Your first big fight, you took you yeah. took it. Yeah, and I'm old. And you know I mean, like to get into it when I think I was like 35 when I started training. Wow. Yeah. So wow. Like, my first pro fight, I was 38. My last one, I was 40. Wait, 48 or something. Like I was old as hell. And, <laughs> and what's the average? Guy. So brutal. Wait, but that's amazing because what's the average age for MMA fighters? 20? Young. Like 20, 24. 48 years old, you were in the yeah. ring. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. I raced cars the same day, which was That's stupid, crazy. But that's how I've always been. I've, I got accidentally in it. Like the radio show, you know, I'm high and I'm creative and I'm, I'm full of testosterone. I was going to be like the best skateboarder in the world. And I got into drugs and alcohol to hide the gay stuff. And I ended up just running from it. And there was a giant piece of my career that I know I left on the table and then when the radio showed up there was still this fire that i hadn't done what i knew i could do in skateboarding and when i started radio there was a natural ability and i was like skateboarding i had no talent at all and i made myself top three in the world and if i didn't get into drugs and alcohol i probably would have been number one a couple of times now i'm in radio with talent with the know-how and the drive like this is this is Easy P, this is gonna, this is, I was like 10 years, I'm gonna be the biggest thing on Sirius XM. And I was. Yeah. Cause I knew it. And then they fired me because of the COVID thing, it wasn't personal. Right. And then it was like, oh God. And because I'd been out of, on Sirius, when you go to podcasting, people were like, who are you? I'm like, who am I? I'm Every podcast you've ever listened bitch. to copied me. Yeah. Not really, but anyway. So how did it work then with you and Tony Hawk? You guys came we've together, your buddies? Friends. Yeah. We've how did he been... handle it when you came out? He is one of the coolest. Uh, it's going to make me sad. Happy sad. I love that dude so much. Like he really supports me. But one time I hooked up with a trans girl at a party in Australia. And there's these two skateboarders that were really good. And they were my friends and they saw it. I went home with her. That's all they know. And then uh, a few years later in America when this, something happened where they, they were doing drugs and they got angry and they didn't like me anymore. And then they started telling people that Jason's a fag. I've got proof. So I'm denying it. Now he's going to contests and telling kids, like when I go to sign a T-shirt, this kid's like, Tuss just told me you're, you're a fag. Is that true? And I'm like, what? What is happening? And he wanted to fight me and he was trying to get people to like beat me up for him because they he probably couldn't have done it himself. But I was terrified. I don't like fighting. Like I was scared. This was another skateboarder that you were friends with. Yeah. Australian guy. So when that I was ducking that one for a really long time. I forgot what I was saying. And so we were talking about Tony Hawk. Right. So okay. Tony Hawk was at the contest, at this particular contest where he was trying to fight me and my teammate grabbed him by the neck and was like, I've had it with you. And then I, and so I didn't want to, I was scared, which is really hard to accept, which is another reason why I got into fighting after this. But I was like, why is this all happening? I mean, this is all bad. Like, is he or isn't he? You know, it's, I'm like, it, people were like, I, I don't believe it, but if it was true, we wouldn't be cool. You know that. And I'm like, right. yeah, obviously, but I never admitted it. 
And then Tony, after uh, he told me that day that he was on the ramp and someone goes, hey, man, did you hear Ellis is gay? And Tony said, uh, if it's true, what, how would that make a difference to anything? And knowing that he said that then in like 2001 or something, I didn't know that. I didn't know he said that. But when he told me that later on, it meant so much to me to know that one person or the person. The fucking person. Was like, why are you guys judging him whether it's true or not? How does it make any difference to who he is? Like, we know Jason and Jason's cool. What is, why, but there were people seg segged off, you know, and there was like groups of people that no longer sp spoke to me. So that was, you know, I moved back to Australia and got on heroin. Started chasing the dragon until I ended up ODing with two prostitutes. And I was like, okay. You need and to that was that. a result of being outed by former skateboarding yeah. friends. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't take it. I couldn't live in America anymore. And I Every do want to just break this down for the audience. You were skateboarding with your teammates and they got mad at you and chose to start telling all of your fan base that you were a faggot mm -hmm. and they wanted to fight you. And at this point, this is what year? 2001? 2000, something like that. 2000. So you're still very much a professional skateboarder. Mm -hmm. People don't really know. But coming yeah. out of the Guinness World Records, however you want to break I think it down. That was after it. It was coming. It was, that was around the time. And your own team mm -hmm. outed you to all of your young fans. They One of the clothing lines that I was sponsored by, that those two guys were the big guys on the team, they called me on speakerphone. And the whole team were giggling, said you're kicked off because you're gay. And they all laughed and hung up. I feel like that's going to make me cry. I feel so yeah. bad. That's and then a the, lot of the shame. The person that owned the company, uh, like not so long ago, I saw him on Bumble, like for guys and girls. Wow. Yeah. Have you found that you're in your experience, the ones that have made the most fun of you have later on in life, even 23 years later, had experiences with other men? It turns out, that one guy that was saying all that and trying to fight me was also bi and tried to do some stuff with me later on. Wow. And he apologized for all that stuff, but he was pretty far gone. He ended up being deported back to Australia for trying to smuggle huge amounts of cocaine in skateboards. And then he found the Lord and now he's married with kids over there. But yeah, he definitely made my life Absolute hell. And I still don't know to this day exactly what it was that triggered him to flip on me. Because he knew that I'd done that for years. But then he flipped on me and started telling everybody. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it was a – I am i don't really think about it, you know, because that's how I go. When things get like that, I just get up and go start trying to do something else, you know. So then let's talk about stand-up. Because yeah. stand-up is your most recent venture. Yeah. And do you talk <laughs> about this in your stand-up comedy? Does it uh, does it help overcome some of the shame that you've felt over yeah. the years since coming out on Howard Stern? Yeah, I think it helps. I think, you know, because I'm still new and I'm, I, I haven't really figured out who I am in comedy, like what is my angle. But so far, I do have a lot of jokes about being out and being gay and being like a straight guy that's gay and I and I most of the time I feel like a lot of guys will sometimes be uncomfortable at the start and be like is he serious or is he just making fun of gay people and then when they realize when the story gets a little deeper that there's no way this is fake <laughs> and then I'm still a dude's dude you're laughing with me and I'm like you know at the end of the day I, I mean am I a bad person like and I try to I'm trying to tell jokes to straight people to get them to understand. I don't want you to suck me off, dude. I just want you to be okay with me getting sucked off. You know, like your mom sucks cock. Is she a bad person? No. So why can't I? That's kind of my angle. And I'm, I want to get so good at it because I can tell I'm, I got a little bit where I see straight guys go, eh, it ain't so bad. Mm -hmm. Like if he's, he's okay. And I'm like, is it like I could, I could turn, I could change people a little bit. 
make like you know because I'm like I'm a I'll, I'll probably knock you out. Like you think you're tough? I'm probably tougher well, than you. Well, what's amazing with you is that not only are you such a like you're such an enigma <laughs> because you're like this cis male that's now pansexual but could quite literally beat the fuck out of them. I mean with your background in MMA. I'm not bragging. I'm just trying to tell you that if you're a really manly man, it doesn't mean anything. If you're not a manly man, that doesn't mean anything. Like if I suck a dick or I or I lick a pussy, like it doesn't. Why is it any different? That's why I keep telling people like why I talk about it so much. I'm like because you need to realize that it's just we're out there, you know, and it, and and we don't. You don't need to change your mind about hanging out with us or or being involved with any of us. We're not. You know, we're not. I hate this media thing where we're, you're in the gate like drag queens or like, dude, stop. Like, we're not pedophiles we're not you know what i mean like i'm not, i don't want to go in the girl's bathroom i don't want to like i don't there's this big thing that a lot of people think yeah you don't know about that yeah they like breed, they like breed boys into i'm like what are you guys yeah that's not true we're not like that yeah so i just i'm trying to fight back and i don't care about my career i mean i do i want to be i want to be rich and famous that sounds awesome but if i have to go down with the ship i will because I do get messages from younger people that, because I don't, you know, I needed me when I was a kid, you know, nobody was me and being proud of it. And now I am, and people message me and say that, you know, they thought think, they think about killing themselves. And then they saw me. I'm like, if that's one true, if that's true one time, then fuck my career, you know, I, that's an easy deal. Yeah. But I do want both. And that's okay. <laughs> if it's possible. Yeah. It made you <laughs> oh, emotional. Shit. Yeah, because it's... I, I won't ever forget it. You know, the, the terror of of being who I am and not wanting to be it. You know, I'm not wanting anyone to find out. The f fear, I'll never... F it never goes away. I can get that fear, that... Remember that feeling. <gasps> Somebody knows. You know, I'm like, fuck, man, I did so many years of like drinking and drugging myself because I couldn't face the fear of people knowing that I might like guys and girls and trans guys and girls and big people and black people. Like I like everybody, you know, I can't even tell you what I'm attracted to. It's just sometimes I meet people and I'm like, this would be good if you're yeah. interested. <laughs> Well, I listen to me. I think it's so important. I um it's such an emotional journey, I think specifically with you, but I think that everyone can relate to wanting to be the person they needed when they were younger. Yeah. And that's not even a gay thing. That's no. just the representation that we so desperately need. Yeah. And the fact that you're doing it and the fact that you so openly talk about trans women in our trans community, you know, we talk about how black trans women are the women that are killed. Number right. one, uh, once, uh, if you look at the statistics, a lot of the deaths come from straight cis men, right. meeting them on Grindr, having sex with them, feeling shame and killing them. Which, and that's the other thing, because I'm in that community and I have friends and I've had for, you know, decades... And I know their story about their childhood and what they went through with their families to be the woman they are today or the man they are today. You know, they're, they're all, they've all gone through hell, all of them. Not one of them has a pretty story about it. And still right now, they can still be harassed and, 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 and treated like second-rate human beings because of who they are. Like this whole thing where it's just not true. Like just, it's attention. I'm like, man, you don't really mean that. You're just a you're just a dick. Like if you really thought about it, and that that was one of the other reasons why it's easier for me to fight for those people because I know them. I love them. Like I got friends that are trans that I love, and to know that they're like scared to go to certain cities. Well, what are we, what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. You're talking about a human being that says that they're worried about going to Los Angeles because the streets are dangerous for trans people. Like who the fuck sees a trans person and decides to do something like that? Like it's such a, 
I just don't understand why people can't see how bad that is. You know, like you got all these movies from the black, where, when people were racist to black people and, and they show the movie and it's like, man, white people were really fucked up. And now you're doing it again. Yeah. You're all doing it again. Well, let's talk about going into the streets because you did just celebrate gay pride very yeah. openly yes. just a couple weeks ago. And that was my first post. And I got yeah. in big trouble for that too. But you but you got in trouble for posting that you were at gay pride? Nah, because one of the photos was me kissing my boyfriend. Yeah. It wasn't even open mouth. Yeah. Then it doesn't mean anything. It down. Uh, by somebody that you love? That's somebody that you care about? Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. Um, let's talk about the positive that you got from going to your first gay pride. How did that experience feel for the first time being in a community very openly and feeling so seen? Uh, uh, I, it does feel good to be around and like hold hands with a guy and not care and be proud of it. Um, but I was on the, the, uh, comedy store float and there's a lot of straight people and I kind of wished I was a little bit more in the gay community. Like you were saying how the lesbian community were a bit weird to you when you transitioned or whatever it is. Yeah, when it. I came out. Yeah, well, I feel like I don't really have a gay community. You know, like I don't, I'm not really, just like when you saw me the, for the first time, you're like, why is he here? I think I look so straight and no one knows who I am. So it's more like straight guy came to watch the gays. Nobody right. thinks, you know. No you one, get that from the gay community, you're saying. Yeah, I don't think anyone really knows I'm gay. Well, honey, after they watch this, they will definitely know you're gay because that's my only fan base. Well, if they're listening and they want me to be a part of anything to talk to people, I'll do it. I love you guys. I just feel like I don't know anybody yet, but I okay, want to well, do everything. This feels like a good uh, opportunity then. Now that you are... Uh, a part of our community. Yay. Not everybody mm. shares this vocabulary. And I'm okay. not going to stereotype gay people. I am going to stereotype myself though. Okay. Okay. And there's a couple words that you're going to need to know now so that when you're in the gay clubs, you are showing you are not new, honey. You may be straight presenting, but the words that will come out of your mouth will be giving homosexuality. Right. Okay. Like bitch. Yeah, but like better than bitch. Okay. Oh, cool. I taught, okay, the last podcast that we did, I taught you how to say bitch. Yeah. Let's see if you still got it. Let me hear. Bitch. That's not how I taught you. Don't embarrass me. I'm sorry, I'm punchy. Do it again. Bitch. Okay, we're going to go over that. Good. Okay, you're Do not. Do it again. Do it. Bitch. Bitch. There he oh, is. I just need to hear it. Okay, I'm going to give you some phrases. I want you to tell me what they mean, and then I want you to say them. Okay. Okay? Okay. This is also a good lesson for Chase. Chase is my straight producer. Right. But the amount- He must be learning things constantly. Oh, my God. What it tell, um, can you tell Jason what you learned a couple weeks ago with our friend Justin Martindale? I learned what a platinum gay is. Which and tell also, us what it is. Uh, was uh, learning what a gold and silver and co or bronze gay is. But platinum gay- is a uh, uh, a gay guy who has uh, never had sex with a woman, or uh, and he was born through C-section, so he's never touched a vagina right. in his yeah, life. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chase, the way I am like a proud yeah. mother right now, <laughs> and that's my producer, bitch. <laughs> okay, with your little straight self. Listen, when yeah. Chase gets a girlfriend, I'm gonna be like, you gotta talk to me. Or a boyfriend, I don't know. We haven't decided, but well, I mean, he's straight. But if right. he, if you ever did want to be gay, you know that well, it's a hard know, over okay here. With it, just we like would it. be, we That's would right. be. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, well, we're gonna learn more. <clears throat> I'm gonna give you the sentence. Uh, I want you to tell me what it, what you think it means. Okay. I will then tell you what it means, and then you will have to say it. Wait, do that again. I'm gonna give you the phrase. Yeah. I'm gonna say it. Yeah. I want you to tell me what you think it means. Oh shit. Okay. And then you're gonna say it. Okay. <clears throat> Her mug was beat the house down boots. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? What did you just say? Man, I got a lot to learn. Wait, the boots? What? <laughs> did somebody fuck somebody in the pussy? <laughs> no, it's not it, is it? I will repeat it. It's not going to help. For your straight side. Okay, come on, Jason. Get gay. Her <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
them, her mug was beat the house down boots. She's ugly. No. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What this means is her mug. Your face. Her face. Yes. Yeah. Was beat the house down boots. She looked incredible. Her mug, her face looked beyond. So when you see a boy that you like, you can be like, oh my God, his face beat the house down boots. Oh my God, his face beat the house down boots? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is your hand like this? Well, that's just, I, I don't know if it's for the ASL community or I'm Italian. It's just, that's what we do. Okay. Okay, so I want you to say it back to me at the end. We'll do this at the end. I'm okay. going to tell you how it all means. You're going to process. Then you'll do it at the end. Okay. I already forgot it. No, I'm going to I'll oh, okay, tell good. you. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Second phrase. Bitch, you better work. Yeah. Okay. That's like Britney Spears. She's got a song, You Better Work, Bitch. I love that song. You actually have a Britney Spears shirt on right now. Yeah, I love it. I'm her. a slave for you. Uh, that means that um, you better get cracking. Yeah, that's not terrible. Okay. Yeah, it actually came from RuPaul. Oh, sorry. And not Britney. Britney does have a song, though. This is a fair thing. Not everybody knows this. Okay. And RuPaul said, bitch, you better work. Yeah. You better bring it. You better give us your I, giving. If they, if he said that to me, I would have got it. Okay, so it's because of my delivery you didn't get it? A little bit. You're not going to drag me on my show, Jason, but I'm trying to teach the, the community right now because now you're being homophobic. That's new for me. Uh, he's a gay homophobe. That I'm going to continue on because I love you, but I don't like you right now. Sorry. Number three. I don't watch his show. It's okay. Bad. Not all. No, not all gay people do. All right. Okay. It's okay. Jesus Christ. Sorry. I'm good. 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 Gagging for the look. Somebody goes good. 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 Gagging. They say that. They don't go gagging. They go good. 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 Gagging. No, they don't go good. 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 Like they're dick sucking. They say I'm good. 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 Gagging. How is she not sucking cock look. as well right there? <laughs> good, good, good. Like you're sucking a bigger dick than me. That's all that is. Okay, what does it mean? I'm good, good, good gagging for the look. I look really good. Yes, bitch. Yes. Yes, yes bitch. Woo! One, Jason Ellis. One. Woo! Fuck okay. Yeah. Number two. It's getting hot. Okay, and he's taking his clothes off, and he is showing the gay men watching what he's got going on. Are you ready? Things are getting intense. Okay. The vibes are sickening. It's awesome in here. God Thanks for it. stopping by. All he had to do was take his Thank sweater you. off. That's all it was. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful. I feel like I would answer better if I took my Take it off. <laughs> Take it the fuck. There he is. If I get this one right, my shorts are coming off. <laughs> okay, okay. Then don't, then don't fuck it up. You're not that gay yet. You don't know what that reference is, but one day you'll learn. I'll, next year, I'll explain that one to you. Okay. Okay, you can do this. Okay. I sipped the tea and it was hot. You know this. Think about what tea is. Yeah. I had six. No. Okay. <laughs> I sipped the tea. Yeah. And it was hot. Think about what tea is when you're like, girl, give me the tea. Girl, give me the tea. Do you know what that means? No. Have you ever heard that? Who do you hang out with? Not like, a Thank God you have me. Well, not? they don't talk right either. I need gay friends. Okay, I'm here. I sipped the tea and it was hot. What does that feel like it sounds like? It sounds like I I took a glance at you and you're hot. That's absolutely not what it means. Okay. Okay. I sipped the tea and it was hot. Sipped the tea. So tea. Yeah. Give me the tea. Give me the gossip. Oh. Tea is gossip. How is tea gossip? It's because it is. 
Where did it, it come just from? is. It's gay law. So there's no it didn't there's no origin story where it was accidental tea. I don't know. Maybe there is, but my gay ancestors ancestors didn't teach me that. I just know tea. So the tea is what? I sipped the tea and it was hot. I got a little bit of the gossip and it was lit. Right. Okay. okay? That yeah. makes sense now. Yeah. You'll use it in a sentence. It's because like if you're at a tea party, you're that's all you're talking about is is gossip. So oh. you're, spill, you're spilling the tea. And the straight, straight producer the answer, comes hey. in. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are you my gay ancestor? I might be. You're like my guardian <laughs> angel. <laughs> okay. Praise him, uh, bitch. Wow, that was okay. a good one. That was a good one. Uh, I gotta say bitch a lot when I get out of here. You're gonna say, okay, tell me what this means. You might not know. Okay. Hold on. It's very important to gay culture to not fuck this up. Okay. Back girls! <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You gotta be. Sh- <laughs> How can anyone? You know what to do. I do. Yes. Is it when you roll your foreskin back? No, it's not. I kind of felt like that was an incorrect I answer. I do. Back rolls. No. Let's start acting like a panda. How would a panda have anything to do with this? Pandas do roly polies. Okay. Well, no. Back rolls. It was given to us by the iconic, oh, shit. ever wonderful Miss Alyssa Edwards from RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, man, that show is very... It like, is. I should be watching But you that, need huh? to know Alyssa Edwards. Uh, if you're going to be gay, okay. Alyssa Edwards. I have to know it? Yeah, you have to know it. Okay, I didn't know it. You're not going to just come into this community uneducated, okay? okay? This isn't the skate world. This is gay world. Okay. You're a gator now. Okay. I'm a what? A gator. <laughs> Skater and gay combined. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. good. Yeah, well, I You're got, a gator. Yeah. It makes me want to get a gator tattoo. Yeah. yeah. And then chomp at the fucking bit, it's, bitch. What's up, bitch? When they don't like me, just. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Piping. Okay. What's you did. Back? back rolls? Yeah. Actual back pat. <laughs> I like that That's one. what it is. That one's cool. Mm-hmm. Alice Edwards said, back rolls. Back rolls. Wait, there's a. Yeah, you have to learn how to do that. That's elevated, though. That's like sophomore. No. Do it. Okay. Horrible. You've got giant lips. That's why you're They're doing filled it. with Juvederm. They're more hindering than anything. What's Juvederm? It's lip filler, Jason. Do I need it? No, it's all. It's better that you don't have it, unless you do. I have a really good doctor. His name's Bernie Blanks in Advanced Aesthetics. Okay, try it again. I need water. Oh, not terrible! Back roll. Ah! Hot daddy. Okay, now I'm gonna make. I'm gonna you- get in so much trouble at the pool tomorrow. Who? No. Oh, God. Don't say it at the pool. Don't say it at the straight pool. <laughs> Got it. Are you going to the gay pool? I didn't. I don't know Actually, where the gay pool is. It. Okay. Just, I'll sh- I should have told you. Take it's me like the to the gay store. pool, please. Eduardo, get us tickets to the Luxor immediately. Oh, I'll send this to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To the Luxor. Okay. okay. I'm going to say it. And I want you to say it back to me now okay. with gay enthusiasm. Man. Because you know what it means. Okay. No, this isn't. This isn't fucking. What do you call it? Skate park media manias. This isn't yellow card, okay? This is important shit. Okay. Her mug was beat the house down boots. Her mug was beat the house down boots. That was all wrong, wasn't it? That was real bad. Because I don't know what I'm saying. I can tell I put boot too much emphasis on boots, right? Whiz. This is not fair. Everyone's just gonna laugh at me. This is all. Don't you fuck. First of all, no I one's just put gonna M&Ms laugh in at my you. Foreskin. First of all, you're not doing shit you don't want to do. And if any of you laugh at my friend fucking Jason, yeah. I'm not an MMA fighter, but I'll beat your ass with my Italian temper. I've seen your boxing. I will. I know that's right. Okay. First of all, no one's gonna laugh at you because I'm your bodyguard now. Also, call me Whitney Houston, bitch. Well, actually, I'd be Kevin Costner, and you'd be Whitney Houston. Mm-hmm. From that You're movie. Whitney Houston yep. and I'm Kevin Costner and I will hold you and walk you through. That's I'm going to be your gay guardian angel. You are 
you know what? What? You didn't have a great couple of years, but now you've got me. And I'll fucking... We're going to gay so hard. That's all we have to do when we're ready to Can't wait take to it get on. Can't wait to You're like hungry, hungry fucking hippos at bit. the Luxor. A little bit. Uh, okay. That was not terrible. I want you to give me now. Okay. Bitch, you better work. Bitch, you better work. Okay, that wasn't horrible. You want to just, can you just slow down a little bit? Bitch, you better work. God damn it, you better work. That was good, right? Chase. Yes? That was fucking good. That was pretty good. Back rolls. Okay, it's not time for back rolls oh, yet. Sorry. But you do say God, it well. I can't wait to say that. Okay. <clears throat> I'm g g g gagging for this look. I'm a g g g gagging for this look. <gasps> Beautiful. Now just say it with a little bit. You don't have, I was I was whispering it because I wanted you to take the shine. Oh. So you can just say it with your regular voice. Okay. G g g gagging for this look. Ooh. Huh. You're doing so good at gay. The vibes are sickening. The vibes are sickening. What was that eyebrow move? You wanted to just give a little eyebrow? Did I? Mm-hmm, you did. Yes. Oh, he's adding good? facial expressions. I can't have too much Botox. Yeah, that was really good. I wouldn't get Botox. I will take you to my doctor. Seriously, not lying. I, fine, I'll take you. I have too many wrinkles. No, you look so good. Do people know how old you are? Do you talk about it or no? I don't mind. Why? How, tell me how old you are. 51. This son of a bitch is 51 years old. Oh, gay people don't like that. No, you, first of all, gay no. people like when you look like that at 51. Right. Ooh. And you're giving daddy energy. Mm. Do you, I know what a zaddy is. Tell me what it is. I forgot. Okay. Sorry. I sip the tea. It's a hot daddy? No. Shit. A zaddy yeah. or a daddy? Somebody keeps calling me that. I'm daddy? That. It's an older gentleman that's still fine. Okay. 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 So you'd be like, okay, daddy. What's zaddy mean? Zaddy, same. Just oh. better lingo. Oh. Zaddy. I like Zaddy. Better. Okay, Zaddy. Yeah. Okay, I sipped the tea and it was hot. This is tough. No, Wait, you know what to do. Is that that one? Not that one. Okay, not yet. Mm -mm. Wait, what how's it go again? I sipped the tea and the tea was hot. I sipped the tea and the tea was hot. Do you want to say it with a little bit of, with your chest? I sipped the tea and the tea was hot. Okay, are you narrating for a film right now? I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, you're perfect. Just say, I sipped the tea and the tea was hot. Oh, it kind of helps when you like yeah. bring it up. I sipped the tea and the tea was hot. Oh, okay. See, you feel it more when you like move your body. You, got, you get all you into do. it, huh? Like, people are like, why do you have to do all that? And you're like, because I feel it differently. Yeah, gay's more fun. Yeah, I know. It's fun over here. Man, I got to make more effort. Now, this is your... This is the one. Mm. This is the one. Give him some water. You do it first. Okay. Makes it easier. Okay. Back rolls. Back roll. That was the best. <laughs> that was the best. I watched you. Tongue pop. You, you, you preload. This is like motocross. Talk. Sorry, I don't know how else to say it. Okay. You preloaded your lips. You you put the suspension, then boom, and then it pops. I saw you do it. Okay. Okay. You know what? I'm going to preloaded give you... your lips. You're not going to be ready talk. for this. I was going to say, I'm okay. We weren't ready for this. Killed this game, by the way. I straightened Thank your you. gay. You straightened my gay. Now I want you to give me three phrases. I will guess them. You just made me think of it with this fucking cum load up. I don't know what you just, the load up. What's the, did you say it's a motocross? Yeah, wow. Okay, give me three. Wow. I don't know shit about. Okay. She got way gay. Okay, okay. Cum load, I mean, preload. I don't know what it is. Okay, give me three phrases. They can be anything from anything you've done, and I will guess what they are. Oh, okay. Um, dude, those Madonnas are sick. What did you just say? I knew it. Gotcha. <laughs> Wait, say it. Straight guy, baby. Come on. Dude, the Madonna. Dude, was... that Madonna was sick. The, okay. <clears throat> Dude, that Madonna was sick. Yeah. Okay. Oh God, is it Madonna? Like I love Madonna. Every little thing that mm -hmm. you say or do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dude, that Madonna was sick. 
Does it mean like she's a hot girl and she's sick? No. What does it mean? It's a skateboard trick called a Madonna and somebody just did it and I was like, that was a good one. It's a skateboarding trick? Yeah. The Madonna? Yeah, Tony Hawk invented it. Isn't it interesting that straight people and gay people use the same words but have very different meanings? Because I immediately went to Madonna on the skating rink where she was singing um, her last album. It's fine. It's not. This is your time. Okay. That Madonna was Tony set. Hawk did the Madonna once and vogued across the No, he didn't. Flat. Yes, he did. When that album came out, that's how futuristic he is. Okay, Tony deserves yeah. our gay he allyship. He is a full hardcore ally. Yeah, I can tell. Like, he has stated it on the show with me, 100,000% 100, down. Doesn't, and always has been. Before he was needed, he already, he already had that. That's why his kids are yeah. the same. They're like, good for you, Jason. No one looks at me different from that family but you know what honestly i know you dealt with a lot of shame but nobody can fucking touch tony hawk and i'm not even a skateboard girl and i know tony hawk is the best right. so when the best of the best is like yo bro i love you and let's start a podcast together all the rest of those fucking losers really don't have shit to say you know what it is i never take advice or criticism from people that are never even doing something that i'd want to do right. when the best of the best is down for you and not that you need any anybody's permission but when you've got like dudes like that yep it's got to make it a little bit easier Not a little bit a lot a lot i don't think he realizes how much easier it makes it for me yeah because i know that he's got my back you know yeah and the, and 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 i respect his decisions in life he's a very rational down-to-earth good human and like the choices he's made in his life are smart i trust his like evaluations on things and he's like that's fine like what is why would anybody care one way or the other you're still you and i'm like yeah but hearing you say it makes it feel like it's re like it's re more real i don't trust myself as much as i trust him yeah when it comes to those kind of things well i think that's why you know having visibility and representation is important but why it's also really important to have representation through allies that make a difference. Yep. People like Tony Hawk, yep. who are making the difference and standing with you. But that's the same as everybody else out there. You know, when you support it, it just makes all these people that, you know, came out of somebody and they're a terrified little baby, just like you were. It makes them feel okay with themselves versus terrified and alone and thinking about, like not being on this planet anymore. Like which person do you want to be in life? You know, do you yeah. want to help those people or do you want to try and wreck them? Cause you could have been them. Your kid could be them. You know, your mom might've been them. Like people don't realize how many of us there are because when you're not a hundred percent, it's easier to hide. It's easier to just be like, you know what? I don't need to bring this up, you know? Yeah. But I think, I I never really understood gay, lesbian. I never really understood it. And the more I understand it, the more I'm like, there's people that are on all different spectrums. And 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 you like you're 100 percent gay, or you're 100 percent les lesbian. Then you you gotta support yourself. And people need to understand that. But the people that are both, or a little bit one way, or a little bit the other, you need to come out too. You know, you need to the more like because that's the big gap. Where a lot of people that resent gays might be a little bit on the spectrum yeah. and it's not, I'm not saying you all are relax. But I would say that I'd co-sign that 100%. I know, right. Because I will say that girls that have been homophobic to me have also met me in the bathroom drunk. I was going to say this, like I, I got so many trans friends. They're really pretty girls, you know? And I, I got a lot of friends that have hooked up with them that don't admit it. And it's kind of like disrespectful to them. Well, yeah, because you know? they're like, getting wait, Why don't you want to admit it? it? What's wrong with going out with her? You seem pretty cool with it when your pants were off. But off. also, let me just say that when you did come out about it, Howard Stern never called you again. And Robin called I you back. I don't want to. Not blaming not, him. And not. I can cut it. I can totally cut it's that. Okay and to I won't say, say that. But I will say that I don't think that that makes. 
I, I'm not blaming anybody, but I'm just saying that when you open up about something like that in the position that you're in, it doesn't feel good to not be met with anything but like homo eroticism and judgment and critique because that's the brand. Yeah, I, look, I don't, I, I still love Howard Stern, even if he, I, I don't care if we're friends or not. I respect what he did with his career and, and he was the inspiration behind me. Get Like I was like, I want to be like him. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't know where I was, my direction. Yeah. I was like, I want to be the next Howard Stern. So he opened the doors for me. And when I came out on that show, I'll never forget. I always get the town car over the bridge to the airport because it's the end of my week in New York and I do the Stern show and then I leave. And when I went over the bridge, because there was a few times I went over the bridge after doing the Stern show when my phone's blown up, everyone's like, dude, everyone's talking about it. That was amazing. And I was like, you did it. You did it. And I felt so accomplished. But this time around, I felt lighter. It was like a different feeling. Yeah. Like I told him, I admitted it. And, you know, did he go into the bits that people just want to laugh at? Yeah. But I I owned it. But you did like, it. Like, did I suck a guy? Yeah. And like, whatever gay position you want to imagine, I've been in it. And I'm me. And I'm okay with it. And I felt like that was million. I told millions of people that morning. So to me, I don't everyone's opinions. I, I got I had to get it out, you know. Like, yeah. If if you didn't hear it, like I, I can say it again now, way easier because I just told like ten million people. Yeah. At like nine a.m., you know. So it was it 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 really helped me. It really did. Like I felt happier with myself for a couple of months there without any. I didn't even catch the bad of it. Yeah. I was just like, I got it out. I said it. Well, listen, I, I feel like it's been beyond a pleasure having you on the show and, mm -hmm. and opening up and talking about all of this. I think what you represent is so important and you have a friend in me for life. I hope you knew that before, but you do now. And thank you so much. It was such an important conversation, maybe life saving for so many. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you're part of our community and I adore you. Thanks for having me. You're yeah. such a beautiful person. Thank you. you made me feel better about myself. Yeah, dude, I got you're your so back. You're so good. Thank I you. you. I love you too. Aww. Happy Pride, baby. Yeah, same to you. Back rolls. I know, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so Funny It Hurts is brought to you by Pacific West Injury Law. Got into an accident? Contact Pacific West Injury Law. Also, there's nothing better for your mental health than a great workout. And our episode is brought to you by Fit Club, the only place to be. It's so funny, it hurts.